Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Rosie and I am a recent graduate from the University of Oxford. Today's video is a Q&A for all of you lovely A-level students. If you are in year 12 and 13, then this is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on the Instagram, which is at just a little rue. And also, you know, if you're not doing A-levels, then stick around because might help you out anyway. This is sort of an advice video and I've just got a load of questions that you have been sending me on Instagram. So yeah, hope you enjoy. <laughs> I'm going to try not to take too long on every question because I have received a lot. They will be split into A-levels, revision and reapplication, so three separate sections, and I'll try and do short snappy answers. Here we go! Does it matter if I choose three or four A-levels? No. <laughs> I really tried to continue with four, but it didn't work out. I basically got too stressed and it was, it was hard. It was really hard. So from me, I think I'd recommend doing three and just putting all of your effort into three but if you really like a fourth subject then I guess it is an extra chance to get one of the grades that you need for university just make sure that it is a useful subject in terms of what you're applying for if you're going to university because otherwise you're just taking on extra work for no reason. Unis versus A-levels, how does it differ well? It really depends on where you go to university. I know I was told at A-levels, this is the hardest thing you're ever going to do. University will be so much easier. That's such a lie. <laughs> I found uni so hard. I absolutely loved it, don't get me wrong, but it was hard. There's a different styles of teaching, so you don't really have seminars or lectures at A-level. It's very independent. A-level's like starting to be independent. Like if you don't work in your own time, then you're not gonna get anywhere. But uni is another step up from that. It is all on you. If you miss something, no one is on your back. You've just got to get it in. You're paying for it. It's your hard work. It all comes from you. And that is the main difference. What should be my third subject if I'm already taking chemistry and biology? Depends on the subject that you're applying to for uni. Unless you don't want to go to uni and then whatever it is you're doing, like an apprenticeship. If you need A-levels, make sure you've got what you need for that course. Regardless of what it is. If you don't need anything specific, choose something you enjoy. I, for example, really, really enjoyed textiles at GCSE and hated to let it go after that. I was advised not to take textiles because it didn't relate to archaeology, but it really doesn't matter because no university asked specifically for subjects. They wanted a mixture of arts and sciences if possible, so that's what I did. If you're really unsure, phone up, email university admissions departments or your apprenticeship admissions department and it will, they'll hopefully clear it up for you because, I mean, they spoke to me, that's exactly what I did. Year 12 is horrible. Is it like this for everyone? First off, I'm really sorry you're not enjoying year 12. I agree that it was kind of horrible in terms of a step up from GCSE. It is a really big step up, especially if you perhaps didn't take GCSEs really seriously and just kind of coasted through. A-levels are not coastable, you have to be working consistently throughout. If, it, if you're really finding it horrible then I would speak to someone who is qualified to talk to you about like mental health and things like that. Talk to your heads of sixth form heads of colleges if they're a person that you think you can confide in, speak to your teachers, explain to them why you think you're finding it not great and then maybe they can help you through it. Talk to friends, um, just try and do something alongside studying because I think one thing about A-levels is if you're focusing too hard on work you forget to actually have a life outside of working. It's all about finding that balance and someone else has asked how to find that balance as well so you just need to try and dedicate, I think it was Ibs actually that said this, this is eight hours on work, eight hours on play and eight hours sleeping. Try, try and break it down in a way like that and again talk to someone if you really aren't enjoying yourself. 
My teachers are frequently off and I'm struggling anyway. Do you have any recommendations for tutors? Then there are a lot of websites which are full of kind of Oxford and Cambridge graduates actually. One of them is my tutor. Another one is Jakari Oxford. That's mostly for people based in Oxford, but that's a charity. It's free for the tutoring and it's all done by volunteers who are a lot of them at Oxford as well. There's other tutoring charities too. I'll basically go and research this a bit more and link them all in the pinned comment. So if you need help with tutoring, then you can have a look on these websites. I know Ibs Mo does tutoring as well, as does Holly Gabrielle at Cambridge. So yeah, just have a look in the pinned comment and I'll have put everything in there. The specific section is how do I stay positive during my A-levels? And I think that comes down to keeping yourself active outside of an academic work bubble, you know? So you need to make sure you keep up hobbies. Maybe start a new hobby if you've got something that you've always wanted to do, like you've never really drawn before but you enjoy it, just start doing it. And it doesn't have to amount to anything. Not everything has to have an end game. And this whole like hustle culture of all of the things that you do having to be productive is completely unproductive in terms of making you positive because not everything has to amount to something. You can just do things for enjoyment and that is okay. It's just find things you like. If that is watching some Netflix, then watch Netflix but don't get into like a binge hole because then you'll regret it because you haven't done anything else. I'm guilty. Guilty. Balance is the key. Yes. Okay, revision. No, thank you. About five of these questions are all about when to start revising properly so that you don't kind of burn out before your main exams and I'm honestly not sure when I started revising like properly properly but definitely in the Easter holidays I was revising all day every day with breaks obviously I like not back to back all day but the vast majority of hours in my day were spent revising. Now in the year kind of where are we January the end of January you'll have just done your mocks I assume and have a little break from kind of intense revision because otherwise you will burn out. You need to just have a few weeks to be doing stuff at the pace that it is in lessons because you're probably going to be learning new content now. What I would recommend doing at this point is after school going through everything you've done in that day as if you've had a day of university. I don't know if you've seen any other uni vloggers who have done a day of lectures and then when they get home they type them up, make them into mind maps, things like that. Would recommend doing that. Then if you want testing on it, get tested on it just to make sure it's actually gone in. I don't think I did any practice papers at home until February half term, but February half term I definitely had a revision timetable and I was going over things that I'd done that half term. If you want an example of a revision timetable, I made mine in real time a few months ago, so I'll link that in the pinned comment as well, along with all of my revision videos. They are for essay subjects, because that is my experience, but they'll all be in the pinned comment, so do check those out. If you have any other specific questions about revision techniques, then let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'm a morning reviser. A lot of people think, oh, they're not morning people, so they're not gonna get up in the morning, but you are more productive in the morning because you've just like woken up. So I would work from when my mum goes to work, so everyone's out of the house from about half eight, I would work from half eight to 12. I would make her lunch when she got back in for a lunch break and my lunch at the same time. And then I would work from say half past one to half past three with like a 15 minute break in the middle for a snack. <laughs> Quite often my mum used to then test me when she got in. This was more in year 12 because I was really struggling with biology, but we carried on doing it afterwards. So I might go to a gym class, a gym class or just to the gym and I would take my revision with me. Now I know that sounds ridiculous because most people go to the gym for a break, but I had read something that said if it, the information that you take in during exercise sticks in your mind better. I have no idea if there's any truth in that, but it worked for me and for my driving theory test, so try it. Basically with Satch on the bike, doing a little pedalling whilst 
reading through a revision guide, um, my notes from the day, and then getting my mum to test me on it when I got home. Testing is a really good method, by the way. Would recommend every day of the week. If you don't have someone at home who can help you, then ask any friend, any family member who might be able to FaceTime you and test you. Before my university exams, I got my best friend from home to FaceTime me, uh, to test me on one of my exams. So. How do I go through all content and not forget it? Well. Wow. That is where the repetition after school comes in. Try not to make content old, if that makes sense. So even if you've done it ages ago, keep trying to go over it. Because a lot of the things that you learn are going to build on things that you'll have learned a while ago. I would recommend making my maps out of revision notes. So, like I said, if you come home from school and you rewrite out what you've done in the day, then you can put that in a folder, make sure the folder's labelled or you'll never find it again. At a later date, make mind maps of those notes. I always stick them up on here. There's nothing there at the moment because I'm not studying. Fancy that. It helps to put it up somewhere so that you can see it every day, even if you're not taking it in, it's like subconscious. You remember where things were on your wall and you visualise it and it does work. It's like Sherlock's Mind Palace. It's a real thing. Look it up. I don't really use flashcards. I'm a mind map person, but I know a lot of people with like more sciencey brains seem to prefer flashcards. How would you recommend revising the night before an exam? So, you may not be at this point yet, but revising the night before an exam for me has always been a cram job. How's your revision going? Yeah, not bad. Pretty good. Got an excellent schedule sorted, colour coded and balancing my time well. You shouldn't be learning anything new the night before an exam. Is this a word? Yes. Council. I say shouldn't because I definitely have done this. So I'm not saying those circumstances should you be doing this because... Guilty. Are you washed? You can't revise in the shower, Jay. The books get wet. The night before an exam, I would make little cards. I'm going to get them out now because I'm terrible at explaining things. Explaining things. Okay. This is everything out of my sociology revision folder, right? These are the things we were like given in class to look through, just like booklets. And these are what I would make. Oh, I just ripped it. These are what I would make for my revision. Yes. So this, this isn't a night before thing, this is a when I've got lots of time and I've probably spent hours on this thing, if that makes sense. What I would do the night before an exam is I would convert this this into, drumroll please, Jesus, these, okay? So I've gone from this with gender here to gender here and we've also got like ethnicity I think this is education basically I've got loads these are 100% all things that I would have done in the nights before an exam I'm gonna take a thumbnail the final section of this video is on reapplication through UCAS to university so if this doesn't apply to you then I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one, but a lot of you, and a lot more than I expected actually, have been asking me about reapplication. so personally I have no experience of this, but I do know a lot of people who reapplied to get into Oxford. Even before they'd like got an interview, they didn't get an interview the first time, they've still reapplied because it was something to do with the admissions test. Most of these people all had a different firm that they had chosen and they really wanted to go there, they enjoyed it, but then they got better grades than they were expecting or they just got the grades that they would have needed to go to Oxford and therefore have decided, you know what, I'm just going to take a gap here, it doesn't matter, we don't have to rush into anything and they've reapplied and they've got it. So yeah, it happens. I had no idea that it happened before I got to uni, so 
I assume that's why so many people are asking, but yes, it happens and yeah, it's fine. <laughs> now, someone has asked if I think reapplying is worth it if Oxford or Cambridge is one of their favourite places, they really, really want to go there, but they have also got offers from other top unis, and yeah, it's worth it, because at the end of the day, if you've got offers from other places, then if you apply again, they're going to accept you again, so you're not really losing anything, it's more about what you're going to do on your year off. An impromptu gap year might actually be something that you didn't know you needed, <laughs> You might have needed that break after A-levels. A-levels are hard and uni is hard. But if Oxbridge is somewhere that you are absolutely set on and you love it and it is your favourite place and you think you'd be happier there than anywhere else, then of course trying again is worth it. And that is all I have got time for. I am so sorry if I didn't answer your question. I have tried to paraphrase groups of questions into one so if it didn't quite answer what you wanted then just send me a dm on instagram or ask me in the comments in fact if you put it in the comments other people will be able to answer your question too if i can't so that's always a good idea thank you for watching please do give me a thumbs up especially if you want a gcse version let me know because we can do that <laughs> subscribe if you don't already and i will see you in my next video